everybody, welcome to Luminate at Home. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Flo and I'm an artist and I'm doing this in my kitchen in Glasgow. So yeah, I usually make, um, when I have access to my studio, I usually make lots of objects out of clay and textiles, mainly functional objects that can be used around the house. But since I haven't had the chance to go to my studio over the last couple of weeks, I've been thinking a lot about kind of the objects that we have within our houses and how we interact with them. And that's kind of what we're going to be thinking about today. So I thought when Luminate asked me to do this, I thought that quite a nice idea of something we could do is to make a kind of visual diary documenting our lives around our houses. And we may not have lots of people around us to interact with, but we're definitely surrounded by lots of interesting objects with different histories, different meanings, different patterns. So today is just going to be about exploring that and thinking about how we can continue to do that as we spend a lot more time in our houses. So we're going to do that by making a kind of little mini sketchbook. And this was, I got this idea from my mum, who's got about five different diaries on the go at the same time. She's got her work diary, her social diary, her food diary, her emotions diary, her events diary, kind of everything. So I thought, why not, why not add to that? Let's have a go at doing it ourselves. So I'd just like to say also, actually, it's a real shame that I'm not going to be there with you whilst you're doing this, but I just want to say, Please take care when you're doing all these activities and feel free to take them at your own pace and pause the video anytime you want. Go and get a cup of tea, go to the toilet, have a little break, take a phone call, just pause the video and I'll be here when you come back. So we're going to need some different objects from around our houses at different points in this workshop, but I'll let you know when we need things and you can pause the video, go and collect them and then come back. But to start off with, to make our, our little sketchbook, we're going to need a few items. So we're going to need five, roughly five pieces of paper. And I've just got plain white A4 paper is fine if you've got different colors great but if not it doesn't matter if it's different sizes it also doesn't matter or if you've only got three pieces of paper that's also totally fine just have a look and see what you've got and we're going to need a piece of string roughly i'd say about the length of our arm so i've just got a piece of red wool but if you don't have string that's fine you can also use cello tape or if you've got a stapler even better I'm going to use string today and then a pencil or any colored pencils you might have or a pen if you like if you've got a pen just whatever you've got around it really doesn't matter so why don't you pause the video now go and have a little look for those things and then come back great so hopefully you've all got all those objects I'm just going to start off by making the little sketchbook is taking each sheet of paper and folding it in half just like that just down the middle just putting corner to corner and using our fingers just to press along that fold it doesn't matter if they're not completely lined up as I said this is just a nice rough sort of sketchbook to keep all your ideas so just fold all of those like that. If you have pieces of card as well, that's totally fine. You could always use that 
as the end paper to your book, but for now I'm just going to be using some A4 paper. Then what I'd like you to do is once you've got all of those folded, I'd like you to take, start with one, and then start putting each piece inside of the other, just like that. So all those creases sit inside one another. And this is going to be forming your book. So we've got all of those, I just want you to try and get them all so they're all sitting nice in line, like that, and then you're going to get your piece of string and fold and put it through the middle, like that, and this is just to keep all the pages in place. So it sits in the middle and then we're going to take it round, like that. And tie either a little knot or a bow. We want to try and get this nice and tight just so it stops all the pieces of paper from moving around. So you can either do a knot here or try and do a little bow. Just like that. So there we have our sketchbook. And you can see it's just like that down the middle of all the pages. So when you open each page, it just looks like that, like a nice neat little book. And like I said, if you don't have a piece of string, you could always use a stapler just to staple down these edges like that. Or you can use sellotape just to tape all the way around to hold them in place. Or if you don't have any of those, you can just keep it folded and it doesn't really matter as well. So there we go. We've got a nice little sketchbook. If you haven't finished doing that, you might want to just pause the video there and finish that and then continue at the next stage. So we've got our sketchbook and it might be quite nice just to give it, put a little name on the front of it so we know what it is. So you can call it anything you want, but I think for mine, I might call it Flo's Home Diary. So I'm going to try and write that nice and big on the front. I'm going to do a bit of bubble writing. So you can use a pen, pencils. You don't have to do it as big as I am here. But why not? You don't have to do bubble writing either, just whatever you feel like. Or you could leave it blank, it's up to you. Home diary. Great. There we go, hopefully you can that's legible. I got a bit mixed up with all the lines there, but yeah, it doesn't really matter, does it? So now we've got that, we're going to start off with our first drawing exercise. And for this one, what I'd like you to do is to collect three items of food that are in your kitchen. And that could be a piece of fruit, a tin of soup, a biscuit, a tea bag, anything, it really doesn't matter, just three different things in and around your kitchen. I've picked a pepper, a jar of olives and some dried noodles for mine. So why don't you pause the video here and go and find three things that are in your kitchen and then bring them back to the table and I'll explain the next stage. Great. 
So what I'd like you to do with those three objects is we're going to sort of do a kind of miniature still life thing. So what I'd like you to do is get those objects and try and make a kind of little arrangement with them. Um, you could think about how could they sit on one another, could they balance on top of each other. Just something simple with the three objects. I'm going to put the noodles on top of the jar and then I'm going to try and balance that pepper just on the side like that. So there's my kind of makeshift still life. And we're going to have a go at drawing that, but this is just a drawing to get your creativity flowing. And I just want you to loosen up a little bit. And I just want to remind you that this isn't about creating really perfect, realistic drawings. This is about just getting things, just getting it going, getting your pen to paper and having a go. So what I'd like you to do, this challenge, is to draw this, but trying not to look at what you're drawing on the paper, and only look at the objects. And you might want to have a little think about whether you want it to be landscape or if you want it to be portrait. And you can change it for each drawing, you might do something different. But I think because mine's quite tall, because of the jar and the pepper, I'm going to have a go at doing mine portrait. And it can go across the two pages, that's totally fine, or it can just go on one of them. It's totally up to you. So I'm going to put that down, make sure I'm sitting comfortably. I'm going to choose any pencil really does, or pen, really doesn't matter. And just have a go at trying to capture this miniature scene that we've got going there on there without looking at the sketchbook. So I'm going to start at that bottom left corner there. And we're not going to spend ages doing this, it's just a really kind of Drawing, try and capture those olives in that jar floating around. It's really hard not to, tempting to look at the piece of paper. You might want to think about if there's any text or words on that, on any of the food packaging or anything like that, if you want to get any of that in. So we've got Tesco. It's just about choosing what things you would like to capture in your drawing and not feeling the pressure to capture everything all at one time. I'm going to change colour to green. These noodles are quite a tricky one, but there's a really nice texture and pattern about them, the way they're all kind of entwined within one another. see little bits of dark kind of shadows amongst them. Just trying to get that in again without trying to look at your piece of paper. Okay, and then moving. Still not trying to look at the piece of paper. I'm going to move on to the third object, which is the pepper, which is leaning up against the jar. I'm going to try and draw this nice and big and get in that outline of that shape. This looks really nice and glossy, so I'm going to try and get some of that, these dark patches in. Choose a bit of a lighter colour to try and capture where the light's hitting that pepper. And then finally, for the tip, that pepper. Oh, I'm using the <laughs> end of the pencil, that's what happens when you don't look. And turn that around. Great. Okay, so I think I'm pretty much done with that. I'm going to have a little <laughs> look at that drawing. Yeah, I can see some resemblances. 
slightly. But like I said, that's just to get get the hang of kind of just getting some ideas out. And I might actually, just because it's quite interesting if you ever want to look back at these drawings or these sketchbooks, I'm just going to write down in the corner the things that I drew in that, just to help me try and remember this moment. So I've got a pepper. Noodles. And jar of olives. Great. So, hopefully that's got us going a little bit. I'd like you to turn the page. We're going to have a go at drawing something slightly different this time. So you can move our still life out of the way if it's going to get in the way a little bit. And for this one, hopefully, we might all be sitting in a room that's got a window in it um, that might look out into a garden, a courtyard, front garden, a street. Or if we're not in a room with a window in it, I'd like you to try and imagine one of the windows in, in the house you're living in and try and imagine what's outside that. And so I'm, what we're going to do is look out that window and try and focus in on one thing that's happening outside of there and ha really have a go at drawing that and paying attention to all the details that are happening there and trying to just really focus in on one kind of section of that landscape. So my window here in my kitchen looks out onto lots of other windows of other people's flats. And I'm quite high up in my flat, so I can see the roof of the other building across the way. So I think I'm going to choose that to focus in on. And again, we're going to use a dub double page spread just to draw nice and big so we can try and draw quite quickly and get lots of the details in. And it's really just about paying attention to these things that you would never normally look at in this kind of way. So I'm going to choose a pencil and I'm going to focus in on the roof. And if you're not, if you can't see the window from where you're sitting at, you might just want to go and stand and look by the window and choose one thing and then go and sit back down and try and draw it from memory. But if you can see it from where you're working, even better. So I'm going to go for the roof. Which has got, it's quite interesting actually, it's got about eight different chimneys on top of it. Actually probably more than that, about 12. It's actually quite a nice day in Glasgow, which is good. So I can see it nice and clearly across way. So we're trying to get all those chimneys in. There's so many aerials, that's something I've never really noticed before, all these kind of big things sticking out. So yeah, maybe you're sitting near a window that looks out onto lots of nice greenery and flowers and plants, that would be nice. Mine's not, not quite like that. <laughs> Still quite interesting. So I'm just going to try and get in all those nice roof tiles there that I can see. It's quite a nice pattern the way they all sit on top of each other. All these different shaped bricks and slabs and tiles. And again, it's not about trying to make a really realistic drawing. It doesn't matter if the perspective is a bit wrong. It's really just about trying to notice all these things that you would never normally look at. There's actually loads of wires around cables and stuff that I've never really noticed before. Loads of pipes, 
going everywhere, which is quite interesting. Quite a few birds flying around as well. So I live in a tenement flat, so it, there's, yeah, within a kind of story of about four, a block with about four storeys, so I can see loads and loads and loads of windows around, which is quite interesting. Sometimes you can see people in the windows, sometimes you can see what people put in front of them. nice because it's obviously a really old building so all these bricks are really different shades of brown and greys and oranges and yellows see tiny tiny little birds in the distance almost just like look, look like little sort of scribbles or dots okay so I think I've done my drawing of the roof opposite my, my block window. You might want to pause the video here if you're still in the hang of it, or still drawing and what's outside your window. But I think it's quite nice, it just shows all the different patterns and shapes that I can see from sitting down at my kitchen table. So yeah, pause the video here if you want to keep going. But if you're ready to go on to the next drawing challenge, then great. Turn the page. And for this one, I would like you to go and choose two pieces of cutlery or uh, cooking implements that are in your kitchen. Probably not a good idea to pick a kitchen knife or anything sharp for this, but I'm going to choose a fork and a spoon. So if you want to pause the video here and go and collect two things from the kitchen and bring them back. Great. So what we're going to be doing here is just a simple activity and thinking about how we can create patterns from these objects that we use all the time. So what I'd like you to do is to place it anywhere on that sketchbook page and choose a nice pen or sharp pencil and have a go at drawing around it. So if you've got a fork, obviously it's got a bit of a roll in it like that. It might be a good idea just to press that down on the page and we try and get the outline of all those shapes in. Might be a bit easier to hold it from the end like that. doesn't, like I said, really doesn't matter if it's not accurate. Just a bit of fun. Then you might want to switch it up, turn it another direction. You might try and do it facing the other way. You might need to try moving your hand in different positions to make it a little bit easier. Rolling it back down. Then I'm going to get the spoon involved to mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to do it 
Maybe I'll do it going the other direction, something like that. So it's quite good just to rest the rest the edge of your pen on the side of the piece of cutlery just to help guide it a little bit. Spoon and then put it in another place. Great. So hopefully we've all created a nice little pattern from those objects. And then if you want, you can sketch some of them in, give them a little bit of colour. If you don't have any coloured pencils, that's totally fine. Also, again, feel free to pause the video here if you're just getting the hang of that one to keep on going. Right, so there you have your cutlery pattern drawing. And that's all we're going to be doing today in this session. But as you can see, you've still got lots of empty pages in the rest of your sketchbook. But hopefully you can continue to keep filling as time goes on whenever you feel like it. So just a few ideas for other things that you could do. You could have a go at trying to illustrate a page in the book that you're reading. You could pick a sentence and try and see if you could draw that. You could have a go at trying to draw the patterns on your favourite piece of clothing. This is one of my shirts here. Or you could have a go at trying to draw the meal, what you're having for dinner that night. Totally up to you. But thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've had fun, hope you've got a bit out of it, and hope that you can continue to keep on drawing. So thank you, bye for now.